Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's nice to have you guys back. And currently the hot topic in the chess world is this bot developed by chess.com that is Mittens. It is seemingly very cute but it is quite misleading if you check out its chess or in general its behavior. Its rating is 1 but try to play it and you will not even survive again 1 minute against it. So if there is one worthy opponent that it can face that is probably Magnus Carlsen himself. So in this video I played paired actually Magnus Carlsen versus the Mittens bot. But of course Magnus Carlsen was not available so actually I paired uh, Magnus Carlsen from the Play Magnus app that is the owned by Magnus Carlsen himself along with chess.com and actually in this video I took the age 10 for Magnus Carlsen so if you want to see Magnus Carlsen age 30 against Mittens please let me know in the comment section and let's get started with the game Magnus Carlsen age 10 against Mittens. So, the game actually proceeds as a Sicilian defense and after the move knight to c6, Magnus Carlsen here decides to play the move bishop to b5. Now he does not go uh, for the move d4 that is the he does not play the move d4 here and go for the open Sicilian instead decides to go for bishop to b5 the Rosoli move and we have normal move g6 that is played and after c3 knight to f6 uh, Magnus Carlsen actually here plays this very interesting move of e3 uh, confronting that knight on the f6 square and asking it whether it will go back or uh, come to the d5 square. So uh, Mittens decides to go for the d5 square and Magnus Carlsen decides to play here the move d4. Now why do I say that in this position the move e5 is actually tricky because yeah of course after a move like knight to d6 your idea is to play the move d5 but after take of course you can't take back as you can see from the eval bar that is dropped completely because of the move queen to a5 and you can see that you are now losing your bishop because usually you do not lose this bishop because you can defend with your knight but you can see that this knight can just take your knight and after let's say takes your bishop at the end is hanging. So, you can't directly take back in this position. So, Magnus now goes, plays the move actually queen to b3 and attacks this knight. We have uh, e6 from uh, Magnus uh, Mittens defending that knight on the square. And after c takes d4, we have the move queen to b6 from Mittens. Now, what it's doing is it's sort of uh, asking Magnus Carlsen to exchange these queens as well as these bishops. So Magnus Carlsen in this position just takes here and after takes decides to castle here. Now Mittens has this uh, opportunity to take Carlsen's queen and go into an end game. But after takes yes Magnus Carlsen will have the double pawns but it Magnus Carlsen will also have this open file for himself. So Mittens in fact goes and takes the pawn on b6 uh, queen on b6 square and after it takes it plays this very good move of a6 now in this position you can see that this rook is putting pressure on this pawn but after the move a6 you can see that now this pawn is actually has two defenders and it sort of applies the idea of overprotection. basically it's over protecting this pawn on a6 square such that this rook is now free to go and attack this pawn so that's exactly what happens. Magnus Carlsen develops his bishop on the d7, d2 square and we have this move of rook to b8 now attacking this pawn. And you can now see that there is no apparent way of defending that pawn because uh, you can't go here. There is no way to access that square because of this bishop on this diagonal. If you let's say if you decide to push here that is also not great because all these pieces are still attacking it so you would just lose your pawn after a move like this so magnus carlsen actually goes ahead and plays this move of rook to a5 uh, getting his rook maybe on an open diag uh, like rook lifting maybe later on he can play a move like this and put more pressure on this pawn so mittens does not care and he it grabs the pawn on the b6 square and we have bishop to 
C3 now it has to defend the uh, Magnus Carlsen has to defend his pawn on the B2 square so it defends the, the bishop move defends the pawn on B2 so uh, Mittens can actually take here and after it takes it can have this very nice position where it is putting pressure everywhere but it in fact decides to go back and offer a rook exchange now you can see that Mittens in this position is up a pawn and the more pieces that get off the board will be beneficial for Mittens so Magnus Carlsen the young Magnus Carlsen that is there obliges that he will not exchange the rooks because the only way to create play for him or defend this is with rooks on the board so Mittens now wants to castle on this side of the board so it develops the bishop and Magnus Carlsen also brings the final piece into the game via the idea of maybe getting on to the uh, e4 square where it can look for these beautiful outposts that can potentially be there for Magnus Carlsen so Mittens castles here and we have the move of knight to e4 and bishop to c7 now you can see that this bishop actually is very well defending this pawn but it does not have much scope for itself rather other than defending this pawn so now what Mittens does it with this move is that it is potentially looking for the c5 break after which this diagonal will open and that bishop will have a very good chance of creating better play so we have this rook to e1 from magnus now it is x uh, this bishop is actually x-raying this knight so you are sort of defending this knight because you don't want to keep pieces loose so we have the move c5 from mittens magnus takes here and now before directly taking here Mittens here actually plays the move of knight takes c3 and after taking back it actually gets rid of this knight on uh, e4 square and after rook takes it finally decides to take this pawn because now what it did was since this bishop was very bad on this diagonal it found a very good way of exchanging these two pieces which were actually the very great knight for Magnus Carlsen and a very horrible bishop for Mittens it was able to exchange through this very beautiful idea so Mittens is up upon so Magnus Carlsen decides to get his king active in this position because now you may say that why can't I just take this pawn and be completely equal in material that does not work because of a move like uh, rook to b2 and you can see that there is no way for you to defend this pawn now so uh, Magnus instead plays this move of king to f1 now you can see that this move is not that great because you can just come back with your rook and you are sorry you are now defending the seventh rank with the support of this king which was not possible earlier so uh, Mittens does not play rook to b2 it instead goes and protects its pawn on the a file and we have this move of knight to f5 from Magnus now what Magnus is doing right now is putting pressure on here and here especially on this f7 pawn after a move like uh, rook to f4 maybe you can create some play but Mittens directly plays the move of d5 now asking this rook either to move away from here whether then I can maybe even play a move like uh, d5 maybe in the future but Magnus here just decides to take with n percent uh, Magnus Carlsen is probably a fan of r slash anarchy chess so he sees n percent he takes n percent and after bishop takes we have this move of very weird move actually of h4 Magnus Carlsen is seemingly defending his knight on the g5 square because you can see that after the bishop took this knight actually was hanging but it was actually better idea to just come back here maybe you can go here and the knight is very well placed there uh, you can even maybe go to a square like d2 and maybe you can push this pawn but okay we do not have that we instead have the move h4 and a5 mittens very well even though it's a bot it knows the saying that past pawns must be pushed and you can see that this pawn is a passer somehow if you can dislodge that rook from the a file then you can win very easily 
So Mittens, uh, after the Mittens played the move of a5, Magnus Carlsen plays this move of uh, rook to c4. His idea is to in the future get to the 7th rank. Right now the bishop controls 8 but after the Mittens played uh, bishop to e7 you can see that the 7th file, 7th rank is now open for Magnus Carlsen but Magnus Carlsen in this position actually plays this move of g6 and for some weird reason blunders another pawn because in this position if Magnus Carlsen had decided that uh, he Magnus Carlsen had just decided to come back with his knight then you can see that this pawn is now no longer hanging and later on you can maybe cement it with a move like g6 but since Magnus Carlsen is just 10 year old we can of course forgive him for this little mistake because all of us have made greater mistakes than this. So Magnus Carlsen instead gives this pawn for no reason and again plays this weird move of rook to a6 in future maybe this pawn can get here but right now Magnus Carlsen also does not have many choices he can either uh, infiltrate with his rook maybe then get his another rook he could have tried that but he in this position first place the move of uh, rook to a3 because right now you can see that this move is not possible because I can just take that but Mittens plays this very good looking move of rook to f5 putting pressure on this pawn. So Magnus Carlsen finally infiltrates into the 7th rank and we finally have this move of a6 and Magnus Carlsen also is pushing his pawns both the sides are looking to improve their position and now we have this move of h5 getting on both sides uh, Mittens is getting space on both sides of the board and we have this move of king to e2 king is getting into the game because it's the end game and we have this move of rook to d5 from Mittens. Now you can see that it does not allow the king to get further into the game by cutting it off on the d5. And Magnus has a very worse position in this, in this position. He is not that great but he can could have tried with a move like he could have pushed c6 as he was doing. If you could see here he was pushing his pawn he could have continued doing that after the move rook to d5 but he instead placed this move of rook to a7 which is very weird because it just allows the pawn to get uh, to get further and now he plays this move of king to f6 which is also very weird because now you are getting into very dangerous territories where you could probably get mated so Magnus Carlsen now let's see what he has to do to defend because Mittens is playing like a machine of course it's a machine so it's playing like one but it's giving Carlsen no chance as of now and it plays this move of king to g7 maybe the idea is to get active this way because you can see that there is no way for the king to get active this way so it instead plays this move of king to g7 trying to activate the king. We have king to e3 and now g5 from Mittens maybe it does, this does not allow this square for the king and you want to now hunt the king down. So Magnus Carlsen goes for f4 we have takes and king takes now and Mittens actually plays this very beautiful move of rook to d3. Now let's say if you just decide to push your pawn that is very deadly as you can see from the evaluation bar because I can play this move of rook to a4 and now you only have these two squares wherever you go it's just a mate for you because you can see that there is no way for the king to go anywhere so it's just a mate and even if you let's say go here it's the same mate once again and the white king is mated so after the move uh, rook to d6 Magnus Carlsen has to give up another pawn and has to now bank on this pawn being nullifying all this pawn but of course that's not possible because my pawns are very strong and your pawn can be easily stop, stop with this rook. So now in this position again what Mittens could have done is probably played a move like this wherein after let's say here I can again threaten a mate like this so you would have to play your rook to d7 and after takes and you no. Know, 
not here but rather first giving a check here let's say and after the king let's say moves here i can just take and after pawn takes i can just block with my rook and after even after you decide to take here i will take and i'm simply up a pawn so that's not possible so that's one of the ways that mittens could have progressed but it goes and stop this pawn stops this pawn from further promoting but you can see that it is already stopped by its own rook so we now have this check from Magnus Carlsen, Mittens just retreats and Magnus Carlsen is now threatening this pawn on f7 square. Mittens of course sees that and gives a check to the white king. White king moves away from the check attacking this rook. Rook simply goes back. Now Mittens is just two squares away from queening and completely winning. So Magnus Carlsen has to now come back and we have this move of rook to a4 again cutting off maybe with the idea of e5 such that this king would be completely pushed back and there would be no activity for that king. So Magnus by himself voluntarily goes back and now we have this move of rook to a4 again threatening this check. So Magnus Carlsen does not allow that to come with a tempo and we have this move of h4 now. Now you can see that this pawn is stopped. So now what Mittens is trying to do is it's trying to uh, queen from the other front because there is no one stopping it and now Magnus Carlsen actually the tricky guy that Magnus Carlsen is plays this weird move of uh, not actually weird but very curious move of d2 rook to d2 now of course this is not possible because you would just get mated here so it is actually very nice move from Magnus Carlsen not allowing this pawn to get activated now it, in this position actually Mittens is not actually known for its end game play because it is known to blunder in the end game. So it actually plays this move of king to e8 and you can now see from the bar that the bar is saying this position is 0-0 and completely drawn even though Magnus Carlsen is down 3 point, points of material this position is drawn. That is because now I can simply play this move of rook to d7 and now you can see that there is no way for you to check uh, to escape from these checks also at the same time i am now threatening this move of uh, rook to c7 now so only rook to c8 checkmate because let's say if you decide to now let's say just go here and maybe not allow this check then i can just play this move and you would be mated so there are multiple threats looming in the position so when Magnus Carlsen actually played this move of rook to d2 what, what Mittens had to do was just calmly play this move because after a move like rook to d7 you can play this move of rook to g1 now there is a way for me to escape the checks because let's say if you give a check I'll simply go here and there are no more checks remaining in the position whereas if you do the same thing here if you let's say play this move of rook to g1 then that ju just does not work because I have this. Whereas in that position your rook being back here I don't have this move. So uh, now Mittens has to keep giving checks otherwise it's getting mated so it gives a couple of checks here and it's trying to now say save himself from a completely winning position now Mittens has to save itself so and it plays this very good move of rook takes on c6 because now if you take I'll just take here and now I'm completely winning with plus four pawns so we can't have that so Magnus actually decides to give a check here and he keeps giving checks because he is now completely down four pawns all he can hope for is a draw but in this position actually Magnus Carlsen does not go for the draw with like he can keep giving checks here but he does not do that he instead goes and plays for a win with this move okay for a win maybe is an overstatement but he tries the he keeps the game alive with this move of rook to b7 with the idea of checkmate again we have a couple of checks from mittens but after uh, playing for Two move, uh, like the position repeated for two moves but Mittens also was not ready to take a draw and it played this move of king to g8 now this move is not made because I can just take your rook so again we have a bunch of checks from both the sides and now you can see that again both of them 
are not actually agreeing to a draw because in this position now Magnus Carlsen could have actually repeated if he had let's say after this check if he had gone back here and already it would have been a threefold repetition after this move and it would have been a draw but Magnus Carlsen in this position like he keeps uh, getting checked but he is making sure that he is going up way that way if Mittens again blunders like it did a couple of moves before he can win but now Mittens gives this check we have again some repetition and now after repeating two times again Mittens plays this move of king to g1 not allowing this check but now Magnus Carlsen keeps getting the king on this side again threaten now you can see that again Magnus Carlsen is threatening a checkmate Magnus Carlsen even at the age of 10 is not leaving one chance of tricking his opponent and again now we have this move of king to c8 because if you give a check I can just block with my rook and Magnus Carlsen here plays this move of rook to a1, a7 again being tricky attacking this pawn at the same time threatening a checkmate and again Mittens has to give checks and play this move of king to b7 not allowing this move because the rook would be hanging and in this position actually Magnus Carlsen finds the only move that is drawing for him that is rook to b7 now you might say that okay what kind of horrible move is this because if you take and take now you can clearly see that after a move like king to uh, a8 there is no way for you to check this king and I am just promoting but Magnus Carlsen's idea after the move rook to b7 and after takes was not to take back but rather play this insane move of rook to a8 now you can see that Magnus Carlsen just gave up his one rook and now he is giving up another rook because there is only one move in this position for Mittens that is to take the rook and Magnus Carlsen in this position is down 14 points of material but you can see that the king has no squares for itself it can't go here 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 so and the king is of course not in a check so this is actually a stalemate and this is a draw so Magnus Carlsen being down entire game managed to trick the monstrosity of this bot mittens and was able to escape with a draw and of course it's a win for Magnus Carlsen because at the age of 10 Magnus Carlsen was not as strong as uh, he is now and this mittens bot is actually very strong approximately about at 3000 elo so it was actually a very nice result for Magnus Carlsen he was able to trick mittens in the end game and was able to escape so I hope you enjoyed that game between two bots actually it was not real Magnus Carlsen I had paired two bots so I hope you enjoyed this nice bit of game and hope you like such content and if you want me to again uh, pair Magnus Carlsen age 30 against Mittens please let, please let me know in the comments until then see you bye bye.